Hey everybody, it's Mr. Greg. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited tonight to be hanging out with my friend, Katie Garner. Hey, Katie. Hey, Greg. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, Katie. We're so excited to get to talk to you. For those Me of too. you who may not know Katie, Katie is the author of The Secret Stories, which we'll be talking about tonight. We're gonna to be talking about life and kindergarten, Elevate, all the things. So we are so excited to have you all joining us. Listen, we also have some really amazing giveaways tonight. We are giving away a free ticket to Elevate Virtual, and we're giving away a Secret Stories kit. Easy to enter tonight's giveaways. Hit the share button and invite your friends. The more you share, the more chances you have to win. And join us in the comments. The more you comment, the more chances you have to win. So what questions do you have for me and Katie tonight? We can talk about secret stories. We can talk about science of reading, talk about Elevate, kindergarten, life, the eclipse, all the things you want to talk about tonight. So ask those questions, hit the share button, leave those comments, and we'll give away those prizes tonight um, at the end of tonight's live. And we also want to go ahead and tell you, get registered for Elevate Virtual. If you have not yet registered, do it now. You can use the code SECRET. And that will save you 25% off of registration for Elevate Virtual. That'll make Elevate Virtual about $56. Um, and you're going to get $500 in downloads. So you might as well pay $56 and get your freebies and get um, a summer's worth of amazing content, including Katie. Um, Katie is joining us um, at Elevate Virtual. She's also joining us at Elevate Phoenix. We've got some really cool stuff planned in Phoenix. So why don't you join us at Elevate Virtual and then come hang out with us in person at Elevate Phoenix. So Katie, okay, let's just make everybody jealous. Katie, where are you right now? I'm at the beach, but I've been working and I haven't gone to the beach, but I get to look at the beach when I'm on the computer working. So still still good, just not as good right? as like, get away from the work and go to the beach, but. Right, now you gotta go to the beach. I know, but I'm flying out tomorrow. Oh, well. No, I won't get to go to the over. beach, but, but I get to watch it. <laughs> whole time so it was really it was nice to imagine what it would have been like if I didn't have to do all the work but it, it's a nice view at least it's a great view it's a great view but it's dark here because I'm on the east coast so view has gone now yeah it's gone it gotten dark here did you get to see the eclipse no because I was still working and I just get hyper focused and then when I get hyper focused like everything just disappears news like my family texts go on unanswered like my family just <laughs> the world happens this is the, you know because i'm used to being in a house where everybody's interrupting me so when i'm by myself for more than three days i just go into like hibernated work state i pretty much haven't left a chair with a laptop for the last three days well but that's i mean now that's I probably, <laughs> right now you're like Woo, look i can talk to people that's right. I can get dressed and, and talk to people. Yeah. So that's luckily yes. I'm dressed. I'm talking to you. We're, so right. We're glad that you got dressed for tonight. That was a good thing. <laughs> yes. I told Greg when I wear this sometimes for things, if it, if it comes down, which it does. And if I'm down here sometimes, which I am, it looks like I'm not. So I'm intentionally sitting up and I have it, I have it way up this time. <laughs> so listen, so we are, I'm watching the comments. Everybody loves secret stories. Everybody's talking about how much they use them. Um, I've seen people talking about how they use our TKS bootcamp with secret stories. So just real quick, give us like the, the two minute secret stories story. You know, that's like the hardest thing in the world for me, right? To like talk. I know about that's why I gave you two minutes. <laughs> you gave me 20 minutes, I would struggle, but I've been practicing. I've been practicing. Oh, Okay. I actually have been practicing it to the Brady Bunch song, which is how weird I am. I'm not done yet, but it's like, um, just like a little gist is um, secret stories um, are not a program. They're just tools to help kids figure out the words. Um, words like this and why and she and her, and also um, that they would not be able to read, but actually it rhymes better. I can't remember the verse. Um, so it's, it's really just a tool. Secret stories are just, they're just tools to help make sense of sounds that probably we haven't taught yet. If we're following our program and our program is really important. You need a, so you need a scope, you need a sequence. Everybody needs a plan. You know, we have to have accountability who teaches what, when, and how, but that's more the backbone, this uh, inflexible, always there overarching trajectory. But what happens, you know, when Howard's 
needs to know how to read his name. And his name's not Ha'awa Arada. And if you look at kindergarten and all they give are individual letter sounds, his name's going to be Ha'awa Arada until second grade. When the pacing guy lets us teach the OU of W diphthong and the AR are controlled vowel. But why can't, you know, we just tap into what kids know, which is when you get hurt, you say, ow. Poof, make the connection, use an embedded mnemonic to show what they already know with the thing that they don't yet. That's there for the taking, independently accessible for reading and writing. So it just gives you a way to speed up the code so that you're not just spinning your wheels all day long in kindergarten and first grade, reading and writing without anything to read or write with. And that's to me where boot camp, I think, comes in so handy because Secret Stories doesn't have any stuff. Like it, there's no, it's just the glasses for what you're looking at. But then you, especially in kindergarten, there's so much more to it than just making connections. Now kids have to apply it, see how it actually fits in. So fine motor skill development, application to the reading and the writing. It's So if you imagine secret stories as glasses, they don't come with a book. You use them to make sense of what you're looking at. But now you want to get going and look at something and do something. And that's where secret stories stops, which is why it's not a program. And that's where something like ABC Boot Camp, where you've got an application for what you're doing, whether it's to the Better Alphabet song and now you're applying those sounds or secret stories and you're applying those blends or those digraphs or your program. You know, like that's the thing you're actually doing. Secrets just give you a way to access what you need to do it with without memorizing everything. So not two minutes, uh, but close. I love that. Right. Well, so it's, it's not just a tool. Just, just right. And I love that, that you say it's a tool. And I've, I've heard you talk about it before. Um, like you're putting this, putting it in the back, our kids' back pockets. So it's yeah. there. So when they need it, they can pull it out. And that's what I love about it. And I've seen several comments come through, um, um, like wanting to like more on how to use it. How do I make it work? I don't know how to use it. What I love about Secret Stories is that you can use it anytime. Like yeah. you can literally start tomorrow. And and yes. I know we we've talked about this a lot, and we talk because we see it in your Facebook group a lot too, where it can people can almost overthink it. Oh, always so, right. And so, like I always say to people, do it organically. Like I literally introduced, and I I don't know why th is always what I introduce first, but it always happens on the first day of school. I introduce yeah. th because yeah. it's fun because kids get to stick their tongues out, right? And what I love about Secret Stories is that it works so well with our TKS boot camp curriculum, right? Because we've got you know, a TKS boot I'm camp sure where that know you. Well, you're such a kindergarten guru. Like, you know, all the things that kids are trying to figure out as they apply this knowledge. And there's so much more to apply. I mean, once you have it, now you got to do everything with it. And that's as big of a battle as having right. the skill. And you're just, you, I've been in your room. You live, sleep, eat, and breathe this. 24 seven and 360 degrees. And you can just see it everywhere. That's that's what I loved when I got to come to your classroom is it's like you were just the perfect, everything you did was the perfect extension and opportunity to play with what they knew. And that's exactly how you spent your day. I didn't mean to side rail you, but I mean, you're, it just was amazing to me. Well, thank you. And you know, it's, it's that, that explicit systematic instruction like you talked about, right? With TKS boot camp, and then you've got the tool, the secret stories, and you add them in th those two together, and it is a powerhouse. Yeah, and you know, I had heard about secret stories for a couple of years, and then we had had a couple of connections. We finally met in person, and we got secret stories into my room. And once I combined the two, it like they they work. They're so easy to integrate. Number one, they just work so well together. But then the results are phenomenal. And so yeah. we love Secret Stories. We love using Secret Stories with our boot camp curriculum. Um, and we're excited to have you now be a part of Elevate. So I want to remind everybody that we do have a, a giveaway. So somebody's going to win a free ticket to Elevate Virtual tonight. And somebody's going to win a free Secret Stories kit from Katie tonight. Super easy to enter. Leave us a comment. Ask your questions. What questions do you have? And... Hit the share button. The more you comment, the more you share, the more chances you have to enter tonight's giveaway. And if you have not yet registered for Elevate Virtual, which Katie is one of our um, Elevate Virtual um, keynote presenters, she's going to be talking about secret stories. You can use her code SECRET, um, which will save you 25%, and that will make your Elevate Virtual ticket 
about $56. And you can't beat that because for that price, for $56, you're going to get over 30 sessions, keynotes, giveaways, freebies, $500 in downloadable resources for your classroom. That right there is worth the price of a ticket alone. Um, plus, you have 90 days on-demand access. You're going to get a certificate, everything you could want, and more. So get registered for Elevate Virtual. You can head over to elevateyourclassroom.com. You can click the links here in the comments and in the description. Don't forget to use Katie's code SECRET to save 25%. And I did ask, see somebody ask if you are going to be in person at Elevate, and you will. You are joining us in person in Phoenix. Yes, and I, I wish I would have been there long before. I had some things going on, and I couldn't. Um, but I tried and, and Greg and Jason were so kind and asking me, I could have been at your very, 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 very first live one or real one, like in-person one. And I missed my chance because I couldn't do it with the dates. So I have just been waiting and waiting and waiting to actually get there in person. And I'm going to take full advantage of it because the way that it's been structured. And I know that Greg and Jason worked really hard to give me the amount of time I needed and the way I needed to break it. So we're going to have time for like a regular session. And then we're going to have time for real talk, like in the evening. And the regular session, by the way, is going to be fun because Jack Hartman is going to be there uh, to kick off the first hour. And I'm going to get to, for the very first time ever, do a live rendition. Jack and I have been talking about some fun things we have store in store. But um, to get to do that better alphabet light with Jack live and then go straight into how we can take those backdoor routes to kind of fast track that learning, not just with the alphabet sounds, but onward. And then the next night, we're gonna get to dig into the real nitty gritty of not just the science of reading, but the science of learning. And Greg and I talk about this all the time in both messages and chats and comments. Like we're always going back and forth um, about things we see that either drive us nuts, <laughs> Things we see that we love, it just it just depends. I think when you teach kindergarten more than any other grade, you're you're thinking like a five year old so much that it's just hard to let certain things go because you're imagining the kid that you can envision that you've seen for 20 years, thousands of kids at this level trying to make sense of things that are again, if you've been working with kids at that level for so long, you're just, you're sometimes just dumbfounded. And I, I love that Emily Hansford's really kind of bringing it back to um, stay humble, stay curious, and don't forget about the science of learning. Because we have to do that as, as kinder teachers, you know, upper grade right. teachers, science of learning, science of reading, you know, it is what it is. But when you're teaching kids who are eating their shoe, I lost one of my lights. When you're teaching kids who are eating their shoe, you've got to be more interesting than that shoe. So you learn fast how to tap in to the science of learning, or you're just doing a one man show by yourself, right? Like right. They have no tolerance for a boring show. Like you've got no. to capture attention. And they're going to, they're going to call you out on it too. And you're, you're listen, like in every when, way. When Katie talks about the kids eating their shoe, we all know as kindergarten teachers, as early childhood, childhood teachers, how true that is. They're either eating their shoe, they're licking their friends, or yeah, I was going to say licking their friend, not the carpet. The friend or the carpet, they're interchangeable. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, my absolute favorite is like you have like like my like I will be like all in on this lesson. Like I feel like I'm like killing it. Like I'm like, man, this is the best lesson ever. The kids are getting it. Look at them. And then somebody finds a staple on the carpet. <laughs> Done. So Done. Fun. And I'm like, I'm like you can't find a pencil in a cup in front of you, but yet you managed to find the, the one single staple <laughs> on the carpet. How? Why? Like, what is happening right now? I'm like, oh, oh. well, that lesson wasn't that great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm like, okay, it? well, y'all play with the staple now for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is the um, kind of thing that only, only kindergarten teachers can understand. Only right. kindergarten teachers, even first grade teachers, it's not the same thing. Their filter is a little more sophisticated than it is in kindergarten. It really is. So you just it's think or swim or do or die. Like you, science of learning is what you survive with. If you are not, and it's not even, it's not high level science. It's literally practical survival that you just right. look back at the science and say, oh, wow, that's why this works, this works, this works. Because these are the things that allow you to live in a room when someone closes the door and leaves there with 25 five year olds. Like, for eight hours. Yeah. It's yeah. a very quick lesson. Right. You and learn. It, it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 
it, it really, I think, and that's where I just was, I loved, and this is, you said something about, and I saw a comment about it as well, about um, someone said, I had a, uh, someone say, use secret series carefully because they might be confusing later. And they said, huh, in one year, not the other. Here's the thing. And it, it goes back to what you said as well, which is, you know, questions about overthinking things and secret stories aren't skills. And what I loved about Greg's classroom is he already had made the paradigm shift, probably because what he does anyway, but his, and, and then how he applied it, but he already had this this fostering of independence where he gave them tools, set them loose, and the classroom kind of ran itself. I mean, it, the kids, obviously he's there to support, to, to facilitate, to do, but we had a conversation. I mean, we were able to talk to the kids, talk to each other, play, like I wanted to kind of get into what they were doing and see what it looked like and sit on the floor and listen to their thinking. You were doing the same, but they were able to be independent. They were able to work together in little pairs and Greg wasn't having to do fire, you know, control everywhere. You could see that the kids were comfortable with open-ended activities and thinking and, and independence. And that's really, I think, why it can be hard with secret stories for some, for two reasons, for secret stories, because it's not, there is no script. There is no turn to page 46 and do this. If there were, you, it would be a program. It would be a curriculum. It would be a supplement. The reason it's glasses is no one can tell you what you're looking at. Your curriculum is going to tell you what you're looking at. What are the sight words you have to know? What are the spelling lists for this week? What's your vocabulary? What is your science bringing to the table? What is Howard's name? Like, what is it that kids are looking at? Because that's what they need to make sense of to get value out of that time. And that's an open-ended opportunity for teachers to take and run with, like you said, all day long. You know, anywhere there's text, there are secrets. Secrets are just the sounds letters make when they come together that your kids don't know yet. Or maybe should have known, but haven't learned it yet. That's all they are. So they're so open-ended that that I do see comments like this one that said somebody thought they should be taught later. That's because they think they're digraphs and diphthongs. They think they're vowel combinations and consonant pairs. They're not. They're what you say when you get hurt. They're what you, what you do when you're mad at your little brother. They're the thing kids play with cars when they're three. They're what you do when your mom's close enough or your dad's close enough or your babysitter's close, close enough to get a hold of you and make you do what you should but then you don't have to when they're too far away, like mommy e babysitter vows. You're just like Greg said at the beginning, front loading these connections that they already know about behaviors. They already understand because it's their behavior. It's kid behavior. And when they're ready to see the connection, that's when they start to apply it. And that's different for every kid. And there's no right. rush or race because you're two years ahead of where you need to be. But the embedded mnemonics are what research shows is the most important piece because that does the heavy lifting. You know what they don't know are what the letters are and which ones go together and which ones do what. They can't keep track of that. But if you have a T and H like over here with the tongue sticking out, all they need to do is have the, the embedded mnemonic visually accessible and they can use it to grab the sound they need to read or the spelling they need to write. That's it, you're out. It's a bucket of snacks, they help themselves. So I that's and that. like Greg said, you just do it wherever you need to, whenever it happens. And if you do it right, like Greg just kind of naturally, everything he does just oozes independence in his classroom. If you do it right, the kids are in charge. The kids will be the ones that say, I think they great. I think they great. Yeah. Like you won't get to control it anymore. They will be running with the learning. So that's yeah, what I loved I'm about seeing, this classroom. And I'm seeing like tons of comments wherever everybody's saying the same thing. Like their kids constantly are pointing out those secrets because once you've introduced them, once they know those stories, they're going to find them everywhere and they love to find them. And like you said, it's things that they get like sticking their tongue out, pulling the bandaid off the owl. Like they love that. My kids yeah. love the, the bad drivers, the ER, yeah. I, R, U, R, because you know, they get to be like, and they love that. And it's such a good connection because inevitably one of the kids will be like, well, my dad is a bad driver. Right. And my so mom just said it, this, right? <laughs> right. And, so it, and it's so easy, like you said, any day, anytime, anywhere, morning meeting, you know, poems, yes. book, sight words, everywhere you see text, and whole group, everywhere. Whole group, everywhere you pull them in. And so don't, you know, I, we, again, we go back to that overthinking it. Like when you yeah. see the secrets, teach them, point them out, introduce them, yeah. call attention to them. And like you said, some kids will be ready to really go with it. Some won't yet. That's okay because we're, we're ahead of the game. 
And I love yeah. that we're giving them those tools. We're putting it in that back pocket. We're sticking those tools in the tool belt. And when they're ready to build that house, they're going to pull those tools out and yeah. build that house. And so and I to love the that. And person that thought that they were too soon, think about this. The kids who need the most time get the least. The kids who take the longest to learn skills are the ones that get the least time because if they're behind in kindergarten and then they get to first grade and they're not ready to learn first grade skills because they got to back up the bus to teach kindergarten skills. Now they get to second grade. They don't have the first grade skills yet because they spent first grade doing kindergarten. They're always getting too little too late. And this is just incubation time. Like they need, I if I had to pick like Sophie's Choice, and I know most of the teachers are too young to remember Sophie's Choice, but if I had to pick who mattered most, my high kids or my low kids to tell a secret to, I would give it to my low kids because my higher kids will figure it out probably when they need to, whether it makes sense or not, has meaning or not. There'll be some parent there to help practice and read at night. The kids who get nothing, the kids who need the most time get the least. You're making a connection that's something they already know anyway, and you're laying it on a buffet like chicken salad coleslaw or a big jello pie. They can help themselves, but they get to see it. They build the visual acuity. They see you modeling where it is everywhere. And that's the other thing I say to people that say something's too soon. Why are we reading and writing? Why is the sight word in kindergarten how? Or the, or her? Are they just supposed to look at it? Are they not supposed to read it? Like we're just looking at words all day? It's not okay to make sense of them? Like why would we just look at something when we can make sense of it? And then take that key and unlock thousands of more words across the day. It's ir it's irrational and illogical to think that we're going to read and write all day long in kindergarten, and first grade without any of the code we need to read and write with. Like it's such an illogical argument. I almost get frustrated making it, which is why I'm making a song to the Brady Bunch, which I didn't do justice earlier, but I will when I finally put it out. So I can't wait. I'll send it to you in your text. <laughs> if you have not yet registered for Elevate Virtual, do it now. Katie is joining us at Elevate Virtual this summer. Elevate Virtual kicks off June 1st. It goes to August 31st. You have 90 days on-demand access. And get this, y'all. We now have an app for Elevate Virtual. So not only can you watch on your computer, you can actually watch in the app on your phone. So we're making it easy to access Elevate Virtual anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. Katie's going to be up reading. So you can pull out your um, tablet or your phone and watch Elevate Virtual on your devices. Head over to elevateyourclassroom.com to get registered. Use the code SECRET. That will give you 25% off of your ticket. That means you can register for Elevate Virtual for $56. You're going to get all of these amazing keynotes. Gary Brooks, Barry White, Katie, myself. Over 30 sessions, $500 in downloads, free resources for your classroom, 90 days, on-demand, unlimited access, a certificate, giveaways, and more. You cannot beat this, especially if you use the code SECRET when you register. You'll get Elevate Virtual for $56. Don't miss out. ElevateYourClassroom.com. Get registered. You can also join us in person in Phoenix. Katie will be there in Phoenix. She's going to be singing live with Jack Hartman. Maybe I'll get on stage and dance with them. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm trying to to do a comedy routine because he is the funniest guy ever when we go back he and really forth. is and he's and it's like it, it i just love how much teachers how much we love jack and like you would like it's like a concert like people will storm the stage like all in like just love him because like just how much of a part of our classrooms he is and we know his songs and we know him and we just like yeah people just love him and he's a phenomenal human um, do you know like, that i actually every time i do anything at school districts or schools the kids always ask me where's jack of course i tell him he's in the car singing and at a car. conference a teacher actually was so overwhelmed it was like she thought i was friends with like john lennon she, I told her, why give him a quick call? You can say hi, because she never talked about anything except him at dinner. This was like 14 of us. And all she was focused on was Jack and wanting to know about Jack and asking questions about Jack. I called him, let her talk to him. Tears were streaming down her face. Literally, I, and I like not even just happy or sad. Like she was having an attack of excitement and anxiety just because he was on the other. I actually videoed her talking to him because I've never seen anything like it before. I mean, he is, he's just like a, 
he's an icon of education across generations from me to you. Cause I think I'm a little older than you to all the young ones out there. Well, I'm a little older, little, little older, but yeah, everybody Probably loves not as much as you think. <laughs> May 14th, 1969. Okay. Yeah. A couple of years. <laughs> Thought so. Um, but yeah, like, and people, yeah. And we just love Jack. So the fact that you and Jack are going to be performing the Better Alphabet song together for the first time live in person, people are going to love Alphabet that. Light, light okay. the light version. Light. That caused so much crazy havoc. But yes, it is the light version. The you light. know why? Jack thought it was musical torture to repeat a letter sound eight times. He's like, I just I can't do, do it. It's not a song anymore. It's like some weird, crazy exercise. I just can't do it. <laughs> so. So we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so it is the treat after they did the actual at a better off that song twice a day. But it, the melodic mnemonic, which goes to the brain science that we're going to talk about because it shows teachers like part of the first session we're going to talk about with the after Jack is how you can turn a familiar melody or rhythm into what's actually a melodic mnemonic. It's not as simple as a melody. You know why? Because if you teach kindergarten or first grade, have you ever taught something with a song and it ends up becoming a read only disc? Kids can sing it, but they have to start at the beginning and they have to go all the way through. And if you ask them to pull out information in between, they can't do it. They have to start at the beginning and go all the way. So it's like, ugh. there's a way around that. There's brain science that shows how you can capture the benefit of it, but let kids pull the pieces they need right from it. And you can use the letter name to instantly automate the sound. So no more trying to remember the sound R makes or remember the sound K makes. It's automatic. And it comes straight out in the most likely order with that better alphabet, the original one. So we're going to talk all about that at both the virtual and the live conference. Well, and that's the other great thing about your sessions, because I've seen you present. And it's like, it's not just about secret stories. There's mm -hmm. also so much that you can learn about the brain and the science of learning and brain research that there, it's, it's just, it's all so good because there's so much you can take away. Um, even if you just if you're like, well, I don't want secret stories, great, but you still yeah, learn so much about the brain, exactly. right? Exactly. Which and which is one of the things I love too, because you know I love that kind of stuff because I I love to know how the brain works and how kids' minds works, and because it, because the more we understand the science side of this stuff, the easier our jobs are. Yes. And that's one of the yes. things that I've loved about the science of reading is that it has made our jobs easier because we know what works, right? And so we right. can really focus on those things. But here's the thing, Greg, it's like a boomerang, like, and I don't know if this is going to make sense, but coming from the perspective that you have or that I have as a, as a practical classroom teacher who's been thrown up on, you know, like it just you've been in, you've done it, you've served the, the, the you've done your duty overseas, but in kindergarten, like, you know, all that, that that brings. And then you go back and you look at the science aspect and then you filter what we now know about the science in in a way that makes it applicable to that world. And that's really, I think, and that's what I, again, that's why I loved your classroom because the open-endedness, the flexibility of pulling in, it, it, you practice what you preach, you pull in tools that you then hand off to kids and let them use to do what you're doing. And that's what secret stories are. That's kind of how my sessions are, is giving tools that even if you're a 12th grade chemistry teacher, you can apply that concept. If you're pre-K teacher of three-year-olds, like just knowing what you now know, you can take what you're already doing and make it bigger, better, better, stronger, faster. So that's that's what I really love to talk about. The secret stories are just a way to apply that for phonics to speed up the code, but you can apply this to, there's so many ways to play and you just have to be comfortable playing. So um, that's what Greg loves to do. That's what I love to do. And I think I might've frozen. So I don't know if you can still see me. Hopefully my we can hear you. So hopefully you'll catch up here in a moment. Um, I but I want to go ahead and tell everybody, before, we are going to um, wrap up here in a couple of minutes. So if you have not yet hit the share button to enter tonight's giveaway, hit the share button. We're giving away a free ticket to Elevate Virtual, and we're also giving away a secret stories kit from Katie. So hit the share button, get in the comments. We'll give you a few more minutes. If you have not yet registered for Elevate Virtual or Elevate Phoenix or Nashville, go ahead and head over to elevateyourclassroom.com. Register for Elevate Phoenix using Katie's code SECRET. For Elevate Virtual, that will save you 25%. That will make your Elevate Virtual ticket $56. You're going to get online, 
on demand virtual access for 90 days, four amazing keynotes, over 30 sessions. And we just added new sessions. I just added um, several new sessions. The thing to remember about Elevate Virtual is that every year, Elevate Virtual is all new content. If you've done Elevate Virtual in the past, it's all new, no repeats. Everything is brand new, all new content, all new sessions. If you're doing Elevate in person, Elevate Virtual is a completely separate event. They're all different, separate. So get registered, join us at Elevate Virtual, join us in person in Phoenix, and you can hang out with me and Katie and Jack Hartman and more. So we cannot wait to see you all at Elevate Virtual, Elevate Phoenix, Elevate Nashville, Elevate Dallas is sold out, um, but you can still join us in Phoenix. Come hang out with Katie. Um, and um, sing along with Katie and Jack, as well as learn this amazing brain science. So um, Elevate Virtual is 90 days on demand access. Um, it kicks off June 1st through August 31st. Um, there are a couple of questions that just scrolled by and I missed them. Um, I did see a question about Elevate Virtual. That it is all on demand, it is all recorded, which means you can watch it anytime, anywhere, from June 1st to August 31st. That's the, the great thing about a virtual conference is you have that on-demand unlimited access and you can watch it whenever you want. And we now have an app. We now have our own dedicated app for Elevate Virtual. So you can actually watch Elevate Virtual within the app. So it's just, we're making it even easier to get the content. Um, Katie's code is secret. So register for Elevate Virtual using Katie's code secret. That will save you 25%. That will give you your ticket price for $56. Y'all, you cannot beat that. $56 for the educational virtual conference of the summer for pre-K through second grade teachers. Four keynotes, more than 30 sessions. $500 in free downloads for your classroom. Right there is worth the price of the ticket alone. Giveaways, a certificate of attendance, 90 days on demand virtual access. What more could you need? What more could you want? So get registered, elevateyourclassroom.com. And if you've been commenting and hitting that share button, then you have a chance here in a moment to win a free ticket to Elevate Virtual and a free Secret Stories kit. Katie, are you still with us? I am. I didn't okay. refresh. I didn't get to lose the audio, but can you still hear okay. me? Yeah, we can still hear you. We're good. good. All right. Uh, you enjoy my terrible looking face that's frozen on the screen right now, but that's okay. Well, listen. Hey, listen. At least you have your clothes on, right? That's right. I do. And I can You're still talk. That's good. There you go. All right. So... Um, again, elevateyourclassroom.com to get registered. Katie will be joining us at Elevate Virtual and in person at Elevate Phoenix. So get registered. What do you think, Katie? Should we do some giveaways? Sure, absolutely. All right, Jose. Um, let's do our um, Elevate Virtual ticket first. And so if you are the winner of the Elevate Virtual ticket, you will send an email to crystal at elevateyourclassroom.com and crystal will take care of your ticket. Katie, if they win the Secret Stories kit, do you just want them to contact you? Yeah, they can just send it to support at thesecretstories.com and put winner elevate. So okay. support at thesecretstories.com. Or if you email Crystal, she can send you that email address. Okay. All right. So the winner of our Elevate virtual ticket is Susie Nordhaus. Congratulations, Susie. You have won a free ticket to Elevate virtual. You will just need to email Crystal at elevateyourclassroom.com and Crystal will take great care of you and get your ticket all right now we have a, a secret stories kit and that winner is donna beck congratulations donna beck you have won a free secret stories kit from katie garner so Yay. donna to get your kit just email support at thesecretstories.com and if you can't remember that you can email crystal at elevateyourclassroom.com and she can provide you that email address. And so um, Katie will get you your Secret Stories kit. Awesome. All right, Katie. Um, Great. Final thoughts? Well, I look like a big sourpuss on the screen right now. <laughs> but I'm afraid to refresh because God knows what will happen. I'll eject myself. So I just am so grateful to spend this time with you. I can't wait to come out in person to Phoenix. And I cannot wait to get to see everybody that's there. It's just so nice to get back in person and especially at a conference like this. So I cannot wait. I'm psyched. Well, we are super excited to have you join us at Elevate Virtual and get to hang out with you at Elevate Phoenix. I cannot wait yeah. to sing and dance with you and Jack Hartman at Elevate Phoenix. So y'all don't miss out on the 
educational conferences of the summer, Elevate Virtual and Elevate Phoenix and Elevate Nashville. Head over to elevateyourclassroom.com to get registered. And don't forget, register for Elevate Virtual and use the code SECRET to save 25% off of your ticket. That'll give you your ticket price of $56. That's an amazing price for an amazing conference. 90 days on demand, unlimited virtual access, more than 30 sessions, four amazing keynotes, including Katie, a certificate of attendance, $500 in free downloads for your classroom, giveaways, and more. So join us at Elevate Virtual and join us at Elevate Nashville and Elevate Phoenix. We will see you all very soon. Thank you, Katie. Thank you to everybody who hung out with us tonight. We will see you all very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Greg.